think we can start now. So hi, my name is Zane Sino. Uh, welcome to Radio Pro and Melissa Run. Uh, I'm Stanley. Uh, before I begin, uh, let me introduce myself. So I'm 11 years old, and I'm going to be starting sixth grade. This is my fourth conference. I attended South by Southwest.edu when I was in second grade. I presented Gugu. I attended Ipapalooza in third grade where I presented the Martin event. And after it, I went to ISTE in San Antonio. And uh, now I'm here. Uh, my social media links are on the bottom at Amazon on Twitter and YouTube. I want to talk about why of all topics did I choose this one. I chose it because our future is going to rely on AI commanded by voice, just like Alexa. Last year, I learned all the, I learned how to code it, but I also learned all the possibilities for the future. I'd love for you to be part of it as well. You can also impress your friends and students. Now, what will you get out of this hour? You'll learn how to code an AI device like this one. And, you know, that's about it. Uh, why is this important? Our future, our future will, will rely a lot on technology. Lots of things will be automated. There will be lots of jobs that don't exist today that will need coders. That's why I think it's important to learn the skill. It's not hard, it's actually going to be fun. At the end of the hour, you should be able to make basic programs for an Amazon Echo, use variables, share your code so other people can get inspiration from them, and be able to run it on both an Alexa simulator and an actual Alexa. Um, who's Alexa, by the way? So Alexa is made by Amazon and is constantly getting smarter and smarter. Right now, she can play music, read books, get the weather, control your home, and more. We can extend what she can do by creating skills, which we're going to be doing today. And all of Alexa runs in the cloud. And an Echo device like this one it is basically an antenna to the cloud. Now, let's talk about how Alexa can help you in a classroom. And I'm going to elaborate on this. Alexa can help you tremendously in the classroom, from taking attendance, to educational games, to even tests, and from the Alexa, and with the Alexa show or spot, reading. There could be like text on the screen and students have to read it to her. Um, and any questions so far? Okay. <laughs> Alright. Let's talk about what platform we're using. So, as the sense Hence the name. We're going to be programming an Amazon Alexa, but you can also program a Google Home with this. The problem is very limited. And no. So, yeah. We're going to be doing one of these, which can do anything on the programming link software. It can't, like, teleport you to your friend's house or something like that. Not yet. <laughs> Alright. What you need to program her. You need a computer or tablet, like uh, this, or like this. Uh, uh, internet connection, this is a web-based tool. And believe it or not, uh, one, of these thing, one of those things is optional, because you can use the uh, simulator. But it's more fun to have one. Uh, I'm aware of it. So, uh. Now let's start with an example first. Um, here is the goal for our program. First thing we wanted to do was say hello everyone. Then ask a yes or no question and do something different depending on what is said. Then ask for their name and then greet them by name. And uh, learn how you can share a code with your friends. The programming language. It's going to take a while to so I'm just kidding. We're going to be using something called voice flow. And let's talk about what voice flow is. So it's a very easy web-based tool to use, and at the same time, it can be very powerful. 
So uh, I'm going to show you a uh, uh, step-by-step screen chart that's how we're going to do it. Then we're all going to open our computers or whatever whatever we've got and do it together. So uh, don't go yet. <laughs> so step one, go to voiceflow.com. Step two, to tap sign on for you or click or whatever, just whatever you're on. All right, and then you'll have a screen like this. After you've signed up and all that stuff, tap or click create project so we can start a project. And then it's going to give you this. First thing to do, give it a name. You need to name your project. Then select your region. It should automatically be selected, but if it isn't, select it. Then click continue, which is right here. Then it's going to ask you what template you want to use. There are five of them. I recommend using blank, but you can always check out the other ones and for inspiration, or even like use them or edit them. I used one of them for one of my projects. And then you'll be on this screen. This is where you code. And when you're finished, you can upload it to a device and test it out. All right, now let's do it. So I'm gonna click with flow. And if all of you guys wanna follow along, Alright, if you guys want to come to voiceflow.com, and uh, if any of you guys need help, uh, I can I can help you. Uh, come on. Is anyone not here? I see any more down. what you want to use it for, use design and prototype. So then it won't need you to create like a, an Amazon developer account and all that stuff. Yeah, if it says uh, my first project, you can hit back until um, you get this game like this. Project one. Um, so I'm going to create a project. 
And for my name, I'm going to type orange. Um, my region is automatically selected, as you can see here. So I'm just going to click with duty. Uh, it's empty. Uh, and you can also adjust this to Microsoft Point. It's easier if you want to use that, but you can always create a new one if you want to. So I'm, as I said, I'm going to want to use this blank. So blank. So uh, does anyone need help? This is, does anyone need more time? So, as you can see here, um, I can go a little glitchy, but, so we have, this is basically our coding area. So we have canvas, so on the top here, uh, this bar right here, uh, there's canvas, which is basically where you're gonna code. There is settings, which are settings of your project. Visuals, for the Alexa show or the spot, these are, uh, you don't want to mess with them on your program, but like if if you get really advanced, then you could start using them. Tools for uh, developer tools, so you need to be like if, when if you publish your skill, how many people have ran in and stuff like that, and then publish so you can where you can publish it. So we're gonna be on the canvas area, and as you can see here, we have a block it says home start command stop help. Don't worry about this block. The only thing you gotta worry about is the start part. And you can actually, if you drag this block, you can, you can move it around. And it doesn't like me. But anyway, um, you can you can move this around, uh, but for some reason it doesn't like me, so it, doesn't, it won't move for me. But, um, if, if I couldn't move it, I would move it, but, but, well, I could do it on my computer, so it should make it easier. have my project there, um, but in case it, it, it should be there because Alright, so as you can see, if I click in walls, I can drag it around, so I can move it like right here in the top right, the top left for me. Um, if there's a problem with your device and it won't let you the code thing. Uh, feel free to uh, you follow along, and then at the end uh, you can you can get a chance to code on my computer. Um, so I remember, so in the program goals section, the first goal we had was to make her say hello everyone. So to do that, we're gonna come right here. There's a in the basic section. There's a block that says speak. So I'm gonna move my pointer. And I'm gonna put go on. Speak, click and hold, I'm going to drag it right here. <coughs> and a new toolbar comes up. So at the top is the block name. And believe it or not, you can actually change the block name. Before I go to this, though, the, is, is anyone having problems getting their block in? Is anyone having problems bringing it in? Bringing it in? So here was a speak. I can rename it. Say, say like, say hi, for example. Say hi by clicking on speak, and then you can rename the block. And this is useful if you have like a code with like a lot of blocks. You can easily identify which one's which by looking at the block name. And the color of the block is uh, usually always the same. Sometimes it changes if there's like an error in it or about the type, but usually they're mostly the same. Um, and then here we have one, 
speaking as Alexa. What this is, so here we're going to change the voice. So if you like having, a, if you haven't heard it, you're going to get to hear it. Um, tell Alexa what to say. So we want to say hello, everyone. So if we click there and type hello. Right there, and this will make her say hello, everyone. One problem with this though. The say hi block is like an island, and this block right here, this block right here, is like the mainland. We need a bridge. So right here on this square right here, if we click and hold, we can drag our bridge to say hi, and that will get our bridge. Does everyone have that? How that drag what? Yeah, you, so on this square right here, you have to click and drag from that little rectangle. Or you can't drag from it, you have to drag from the rectangle to rectangle. Is it okay if it's curving? Yeah, it's fine if it's curving. Yeah, it, they do curve, it's fine. If you want to like change the shape, if you click somewhere in the middle, it'll put a little point there and you can move the point if you need to make custom shapes for your um, bridges. So you don't get confused on like when when like uh, things go through blocks. If you're wired through the block, uh, you won't get confused. You can make it around. So um, does everyone have that? but it doesn't work as well on an iPad. That's why I'm my computer to go. Uh, it would be more useful if my computer actually had AirPlay. Uh, uh, for those of you who can't code because you're on mobile devices, at the end you can uh, you can go on this. And then uh, yeah, from this I can upload it and you can try it out. So, um, now we're going to test it out but not uploading it, because that's going to take a little bit of time when we do it at the end. Uh, we're going to use a simulator. So we're going to click on this little play button right here. It says test. Click on it. We get this. Okay. So this is asking how we want to test it and from where. So um, I'm just going to click start test. So we're going to start from the beginning. And what's that? It says hello, everyone. Now, it won't say it out loud. But um, this is saying, like, what will Alexa say in this situation? Sam, <laughs> could you show me again where you were when you asked it to test? Uh, yeah. So I'm going to close this. So it's this little play button right here. Okay. Thank you. Right next to the Alexa. And then you click Start Test. And then if you want to try it again, you can click this yellow bar on the bottom, and then it will take you back to the screen. So now I'm going to close it. And now let's go on to our second goal, asking me yes or no question. So we can actually add on to the speak block. So for me, I'm going to put the All right. And I'm going to ask how are, are you having a good day? So um, just so I can so are, Question mark, so she asks, asks it as a question. So does everyone have the, the question? I can't tell. Did you put Siri after Mr. Rose or what? 
Uh, yeah, there's a period right here. Yeah, it's, yeah. So it tells her to pause. So it's a, so she doesn't. So she's a. So she doesn't say like, "Hello, everyone. Are you having a good day?" We want her to pause. So now we're gonna make. Now we want the user input for a uh, for yes or no. So I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna grab a new block. It's called choice, right underneath speak. So I'm gonna grab the choice block. And I'm going to drop it right next to say hi. Okay. Yes, I can do it. All right. And we get a, the toolbar is covering up choice, so I'm actually going to move, move choice a little bit underneath say hi. And actually, I can combine them together. It will make it easier. So if I drag choice on top of say hi, well, we have to drag it like into the template and drop it first. And then you can drag it again on top of say hi. And we just built a block. So we can combine them. Uh, you don't have to combine them. You can also just put a bridge from say hi to choice, but it's easier if you make a block because then you don't need bridge. And in choice, we have only one option. We want two, yes or no. So we're gonna click add choice right here. We have one and two. Does everyone have that? Um, it's so you click on choice, and then when you get this toolbar, you click add choice, and we have one and two. Anyone else need help? Alright, does everyone have that? Alright, so now, we want, we want our choices to be yes and no. So we're going to come to number one, we're going to click enter user reply, and we're going to type yes. Yes. And we're going to hit enter. We have to hit enter. Then we're going to come to number two. We're going to type no. And so enter. So now we have yes and no. But what happens if they say yeah or yeah? Uh, it, it, will, it, will, it will say that it will, it, she will say that that's, that's not yes or no, so she won't. So she'll go down the else category, and I'll talk about it later. We want her to identify yes and yeah, as, but also as yes. So we're going to come to number one, we're going to hit enter synonyms of user replies. We're going to type yup, hit enter. And then it says yup right here. So what this is saying is that if they say yup, it also means yes. So we'll know that that's a synonym. And then we can also type yeah. So this is the same. So then, um, and if we were to add multiple choices, like yup, yeah, yup, yeah, all this stuff, then we would have to create a bunch of bridges. And if we use a synonym feature, we just only have to create one bridge. That's what makes it simple. And then for no, they could say no. Or if to the teenager, they would say nah. So now if I was scroll down, all right. Yeah. So yeah, yes, yeah, yup, all go all mean yes, and then no, nah, and nope all mean no. Uh, anyone need help? Let's get these. Yeah. Alright, everyone got him? Alright. Now we're in a now what if they say none of them? What if they say like I'm not sure or something like that? It's gonna go down it's going to go down, it's going to take. So in the choice block, there are three bridges it can take. Else, one, and two. Else is if they say none of them. So if they say else, we're going to have her ask the, ask, we're going to have her say, is the yes or no question, then ask the question again. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to come here and grab a speak block, put it right here, and then here where it says tell us what to say, I'm going to put, I'm going to go to put it down for a sec, uh, but I'll bring it up uh, after I'm finished typing. It's a uh, yes <clears throat> or no question. So after you type it's a yes or no question, you have to put a period and a space. You have to put those, so, so then when it asks the question again, it won't be like, 
it's a yes or no question. Are you having to feel that we need a period and space for uh, it to actually, uh, for it to work? So you put, it's a yes or no question, period space. So that everyone has that. Right. Now, we're gonna do a bit of uh, bridging. So we're gonna come here to else, and I'm gonna drag it over to speak. And as I said, how you can like put like a point, we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna click right here, click there, and I go to point, and I'm gonna drag that over here. Then I'm gonna click here, so I can get another point, and I'm gonna drag that here. <laughs> so I just created like a little zigzag bridge. Does everyone have, does anyone need help making that? to connect our choices to the yes and no. So if we click on choice again, we can see here we have one yes and two no. So here we have our one and two. So here under one it says yes, so we know that number one is yes, so I'm going to drag the number one to yes and the number two to no. And now I have three wires coming out of the else, coming out of the choice, else, one, and two. Does everyone got their wires? Now, we're gonna, now we have to make us say the uh, things. We have to, so we want her to say, is like, on yet one, we can say, great. Then we're gonna put a period and then a space. You have to put the period in space, so then when we're doing them back together for another speech, when we're asking her the name, it, it actually pauses. And, and for no, I'm gonna put, uh, too bad. 
that period of space. So I have one hand up. I'm going to hit start test. Hello everyone, are you having a good day? So I'm going to click on response so I can start typing and I'm going to say yes. Yes. And I'm going to hit enter. Great. Now let's try it again. Let's do it up. So I'm going to click on the yellow bar, come back to start test, and then response. I'm going to put a no. Too bad. Now I'm going to try one of the synonyms. So I'm going to do yeah. Start test. I don't know something like that. Um, so, yeah. right. It's a yes or no question. Hello, everyone. Right. So it says it's a yes or no question, and it asks the question again. And it will do this over and over again, so it could be an instant loop. Well, well, until the user becomes bored. Then, we're going to want the yes and no to join together again. So, we're going to grab another speak block because we want to ask their name for our lap for third uh, uh, goal. We're going to put it right here in the middle. And I'm going to call this ask for a name. yes to ask for a name, and then we're going to make a bridge from no to ask for a name. So we have two bridges when you ask for a name. Does everyone have that? Anyone need help? Alright, now we want to ask for, for the name. I'm going to have to put this down to the right side quickly, and then I'm going to bring it back up. to the left hand side, we have this thing that a button that looks like a command line input and it says variable. We're going to click there and then we, we're going to click on variable name we're right here and we're going to type the name. Name and then hit enter and then, uh, yes, and then a blue thing that's the name on it will appear right here. This will, so when you have, so does everyone have their name variable? Alright, so you're going to click right here on the side where I'm guessing that looks like a, right, this button that looks like a command line input. You're going to click there, then you're going to, in variable name, you're going to type name, hit enter, and a name, a blue name will appear. So you will not, do not put the squiggly brackets, it, uh, these are automatically put. You don't, you don't, you don't type the squiggly brackets. You just type name. So we don't want to have that typed in. Alright, now we're gonna click the thing that looks like a computer to go back to the blocks. And then we're gonna we're gonna come down to logic. And if your thing looks something like this, click logic to bring it back down. And then you're gonna I'm gonna need some space now. We're gonna bring in a capture block right here. Third is the third block under logic. So we're gonna bring that. I'm going to bring it a little bit more, like right here, so you guys can see. Alright, and I'm going to make a little, uh, I'm going to make a little bridge from ask for, to, for name to the capture block. Sorry about this little glare there. So does everyone have the capture block in the bridge? Alright. Now, we're going to click on capture, and we have input type required. 
This is for Alexa to know what kind of thing is it listening for. So we're going to click there and we're going to type name. All right. So if we type name, we have four options. We're going to we're going to click the very last one. U.S. first name. So this is telling Alexa that it is listening for a U.S. first name, uh, so it can put in a variable. Then, where it says capture input to, I'm going to click here and we're going to type name. Oh, there it is. You can just click it and it appears like that. Does everyone have their capture box filled out? No one needs more time. Right. Now, we wanted to, to greet them by name. So we're going to grab another speak block, put it right here next to capture. And then tell Alexa what to say. So we're going to say, like, hello. Then we wanted to say their name. So we're going to put an opening squiggly bracket like that. And we're going to type name. Now, oh, it's right there. And you have to click it, and it will appear blue. If, it, if it's not blue, then that means um, that, it, that, it's, uh, that she did not recognize the variable. Uh, it's, it's that's because it's typing name. So it appears in the name. And it should say that. Does everyone have that in a speed block? Anyone need help? Alright. So, are we ready to move on? No? Alright. Now, uh, we can link the capture block to the speak block. Here. And now let's test it. So I'm going to display. I'm going to hit start test. Tell her one may have a good day. So I'm just going to say yes. Great. Who do I have the pleasure to speak to? Put my name. Okay. Hit enter. Hello, Dane. Now let's try it again with uh, I'm just going to I'm going to put a random name. Uh, Joe. To my actual, I'm going to put it on this right here. So to do that, I'm going to click upload to Alexa. Now, you guys, uh, unless you have an Amazon developer account already, you guys won't be able to uh, put this on an Echo device. If you do have an Echo device at your house and you have an Amazon account, then go to developer.amazon.com, sign in with your Amazon account, and it's automatically going to create, start create, helping you create an Amazon developer account with linked to your Amazon account, so then you'll be able to do this. So this upload to Alexa button will put it only on my devices. It won't put them, so it won't need to go under review or anything. Because if it will need to go under review, it's going to take a while. I'm going to click here. And if, so what this is doing is sending over to Amazon developer, and uh, it's creating all the intents and user utterances which are, which uh, I don't have any. So it's gonna start building the interaction model, which is basically saying, um, like, uh, which is basically saying, which is basically turning all the code into JSON, which is the language that um, the Echo, uh, that Amazon developer understands. And then, and then the Amazon developer turns it into a skill, sends it over to my device, and then it will enable the skill, giving the skill permission to run on my device. So I'm right, gonna wait. And it would feel alright. So now, if I were to run it, so my skill name is called Learn, and to open the and to start skill, I say Open Learn. I'll say Open and Learn. Now there's something called the invocation name, which is the name with what you say to start the skill. The usually the invocation name is the same name as the skill. But not. But you can you can change it by going to settings and then changing it. But I haven't changed mine, so it's learn. So Alexa, open learn. Hello everyone. Are you having a good day? Yes. Great. Who do I have the pleasure to speak to? Zane. Hello Zane. All right. Does anyone else wanna do it? <laughs> Does anyone else want to uh, run that program? Stop for it? 
Try it again. Alexa, open learn. Hello, everyone. Are you having a good day? Yes. Yes. Hello, everyone. Are you having a good day? Yes. Yes. Great. Who do I have the pleasure to speak to? Jessica. Hello, John Hedda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the microphone isn't that like good from that far away. Uh, but I mean, it works. So, right now, I'm gonna, uh, <laughs> now I'm going to go back to my presentation. I'm going to mute it. Did I can I ask you a question? Do you yeah. have training videos available for us? Uh, no. Okay. I don't know. Voice Flow does. Voice Flow does uh, on their homepage. So. I'm going to go back to the presentation. Uh, all right, there we go. That's gone. All right. Now, let's talk about what the other options are other than voice mode. So there are things like invocable.com, uh, formerly called getstoryline.com, but they changed your name. The weird thing is, invocable, you have to pay for it, and yet it's more limited than voice mode. So I don't get the point of using it. You can use AWS to code, Amazon Web, Amazon Web Services. The problem with that is that you have to create everything manually, like the intents and user utterances. And the, uh, I didn't have any other than stop and help, um, but those, uh, when you use VoiceFlow, VoiceFlow will automatically create them for you. And plus, when you use AWS, what will happen is if you, when you name your intents and put in user utterances, you use the intent name in your code, but if you like accidentally forgot to capitalize that one letter, there will be, an, there, will be an, there, there will be an error, and you don't want that. So it's easier to use uh, voice flow. And uh, now, more things will be created over time. I'm not saying that like these are the only things that will ever be created. I mean, there are more, there are other ones that are out there. I heard of voice apps, but I don't, I don't like that one. Um, but uh, keep, on, keep uh, on the lookout for more cool stuff. Now, before we, before I hand it over, I want to leave you with one thing, and that is the definition of a tool. Now, back then, when humans were first on the planet, there was this big tool, and uh, and uh, people were so excited about it that they were so excited that if the iPhone 20 was just released, how excited people were, people will be, is the exact same amount of excitement that the people had back then. Uh, for something that you guys might think is very boring, but was really exciting for this. It's a rock. Yeah, it's a rock. They used them to hunt, cut down trees, more stuff. But it was an amazing thing. Then, someone had the, uh, had the idea of putting a stick on the rock, and they made a hammer. It doesn't look like it, it would, now back then it didn't look like this. It looked, uh, it, it looked a little uh, torquey and stuff. Um, they, they had like, uh, they just got cut down the tree, took the branch and just put it on the rock. So it wasn't in this shape. But uh, they used it to hammer stuff, like they would hammer wood into other pieces of wood. They weren't 
people weren't like, they, they didn't have nails back then, or did they? Uh, then, uh, we went to a tool that I have right here. But, without them, uh, it would be very difficult to uh, do stuff. But, um, we have, we have, and then now we've got a big tool. We can't see it. And yet, we have no idea how much we're using it. It's called the cloud. We can't see it, but without the cloud, this wouldn't be here. And I probably wouldn't, and I would probably either not be giving this speech or uh, be doing something else. And, uh, yeah, and uh, going from a rock to the cloud is a huge shift in life. All right, before I close, uh, any questions? Uh, yes? What are some examples of how you use this? About how I use what? How you use this. So I, uh, I made a, uh, so me and my sister are constantly getting a bike over, and guess what? So I made a skill that will automatically choose uh, one of us uh, randomly. I can, I can demonstrate it for you if you want to. Yeah. All right. Alexa, open turn picker. Welcome to turn picker. Drum roll, please. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, I choose, same. <laughs> so either choose between my, me or my sister Uma. So, no, that's the. Um, did, did you skew it in your direction? No, yeah. it's, it's random. <laughs> because if, if I did that, then it would like, whose turn is it to take out the trash? And uh, it would be dead. <laughs> so yeah, I, I made it random. <laughs> Because it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, if it's, if it's always me or always my sister, wouldn't be too uh, good. All right, any other questions? Right, any, is that it? How long right. have you been doing this? Uh, for a while. Uh, um, since, uh, since last year. I, was, I started last year, and uh, I just kept going. How did you find out that you could cut it? Um, so I attended a camp, it's called Hello World, um, and there uh, they taught me how to code it um, using a, a, a tool, it wasn't voice flow, it was a different one, but um, that tool, uh, that tool was called Get Storyline, uh, they, it turned, that turned, that was the thing that turned into Invocable, and when it turned into Invocable, it started costing money, so uh, I, I, Googled some of, uh, researched some other ones, and I found, uh, I found voice flow, and uh, the switch over to voice flow. Any other questions? All right, now we, uh, uh, let's do, we have uh, two minutes, like one minute. Uh, I, uh, yeah? Um, how do you see this being used in school? How so, do you see a teacher somebody using this in school for So like, um, there are many uses, as I mentioned, uh, in the electronic classroom here. Um, I, so there, there, are, there are so many reasons, but a few of them are uh, attendance, educational games. Like, so for attendance, I have a test skill to, I have a test skill I built, if you want to check it out. Yeah. Um, so what it does is uh, it gets, it's not too good right now. It's still like it, I'm still like fixing it up a bit, but it's supposed to. So like it will, I'll say uh, four names, and then it's gonna add, and then uh, I'll say it's near uh, here. So um, Alexa, open attendance. Bob. Here. Jeff. Here. Jill. Uh, not here. Joke. Present. Bob is here. Jeff is here. Jill is here. Joe is not here. Okay, yeah, it's still in the moment, so it's not like, it's not working too well. I'm just, so I'm trying to fix it up. Um, educational games. Ah, um, but, um, those can be from like math games, like uh, math games to uh, 
uh, there are a lot of uh, games, uh, voice games out there. Uh, they're very popular these days, uh, if you haven't known. Uh, voice games are becoming very popular. And uh, it, making a game, an educational game, is really easy. Like, you could like, just put in a bit of math in there, uh, pop in a bit of a like, flash card. You can do a lot of stuff. Um, tests. Uh, she can like ask questions, and then students can respond with their voice. And then, uh, she, and then you can actually, it, with VoiceFlow, you can make her edit a Google Sheet file. So then, when the student is finished taking the test, your your scores and your name will be put in a Google Sheet file. So then, the teacher can go in and see like the scores for the test. And for reading, for the Alexa Show or Spot that has screens, you can like put um. Like, you can, put, you can have like text appear on the screen, and students have to read it to her, and she and then she'll she'll tell them and if they how good they did and what it said. Also made that. Uh, any other questions? Is there some sites that have like a storage? Like they already have this code written, like a library? Or you can like uh get other code. Uh -huh. So they don't have something like that. You could find like on the web. Like there are, I, I there are like it, it's not like a built-in voice flow one. We could find things on the web of like, other things that people did. And um, uh, I just not like you can't like bring one into voice flow. But if you're like, but if like your friends have one, they can uh, use the share feature, which I can show you if you want me to. Um, there are where is voice flow. So if, uh, this arrow, if we click this arrow, if I share and we turn on allow preview sharing, we get a link. And I'm going to I'm gonna click the, the little paper icon to copy it. Then I'm going to paste it in here. It's a long link. So um, if, you're, if, you're, if you want like uh, people to type it in, I'd recommend you use tinyurl. Uh, so tinyurl.com to, to uh, shorten it. But so this will this is what they'll see. So they can see the code and they can see like inside the blocks. The thing that they can't do though is um is uh is slash is edit it or uh, put it on their device. Now if you want them to put it on their device, you can use the collaboration feature, which if we go back and we come here to add collaborators, we can uh, add you can add more people. Any other, uh, any other questions? All right, uh, time's up. So thank you.